to be the law Screws in the memory
some of the accoutrements and some of the finer points of things going on backstage. Um, 
if we pan right, we'll see Gary Lanier. He's uh, Gary's uh, in the band, guitarist, and he's from Eugene, Oregon. A big fan of 9-volt batteries, let me tell you. And uh, this is Chris Peak. He is our sound tech, drum tech, etc. Also somewhat of a classical guitarist. Over here you will notice. Who's over here? Can we, uh, let's see, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Victor Macias and I'm a bass player. This is presenting our new vocalist, Mr. Luke Easter. And Luke, do you want to come over here a second? Luke, please. Come on, come on. He's very shy, but he's not on stage. No, actually, he's not shy. Um, Luke sent in a tape uh, about a month and a half ago. He sounded great on the tape. We got him down. He's from the Bay Area. And uh, he came down. He sounded better in person. And here he is. He's doing a phenomenal job. And we're really happy to uh, have him in the band. So, Luke, do you have something to say? No comment. Thank you. Okay. He's, as I said, a little more, little more talkative on stage.
and I'm Jaira from Mortal. Um, we're missing Jeff right now, but um, he's not anywhere to be found. We started out as Mortal Wish, Jerome, myself, and two other guys, right, Jerome? Yes. I would say so. And um, we were a Depeche Mode kind of type of New Order kind of band. Then, techno, kind of techno, industrial techno. I don't know. 80s. Very 80s. Very old music. And uh, the other two guys in Mortal Wish didn't quite like um, our guitars. And so we split and formed uh, Mortal. Actually, we took out the Wish. It was Mortal Wish. Now it's just Mortal. Since the Wish was the iffy part about the whole thing, we decided to do that. Right, Brian? Yes. album was a great album, but the guitar sounds left something to be desired. I'm not a guitar player, though. But I did play guitars once on tour. Jerome did play some guitars. Jerome, Jerome has played everything in this band. He has played keyboards, he has played bass, he has played guitar, he has he has sung a few, he's, he's done some lead singing. Did I say he has sung? And um, and he, now he's playing drums, and I, and then who knows what the future may hold. Yeah, well, actually, who knows who what the future may hold for Jeff. Maybe he'll be the new lead singer, and I'll translate into uh, the roadie or something like that. I guess we, we set out to um, to write music that we wanted to hear, and um, I guess when you're doing that, you, you, you tend to obviously put your personality into it more than you think that you do, you know? We, we, um, we in, in earnest, did r want to write some pop songs, you know, that uh, we wanted to hear the way we wanted it done, and I, I, I think we accomplished that on, on Lucis, and then... Um, and then we we got tagged with a with an industrial thing because obviously it was the it was the easiest way to to classify us at first and um, which is really cool but then there's bands like Circle of Dust and and Brainchild you know Generation or uh, Under Midnight that 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 you know given that tag they 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 deliver you know the industrial thing and so I guess now. We're just red-headed stepchildren, and we don't really want... It's happy dance metal. Yeah, it's, it's heavy. It's kind of heavy dance. Uh. But happy. It's happy. It's not angry. It's happy. Yeah. In fact, it's going to get even happier. Um, I, think, I think the music is going to... Uh, in fact, I know. Because <laughs> we're writing it. <laughs> but the music is going to be um, heavier. You know, a lot more guitars. <laughs> and the Lord calls you to be an artist, you know, where the art doesn't fail, you know, why not bring in, you know, your whole battery, your whole life into your art and, and, and talk about the things that, that mean to you the most. I mean, if, if it was, you know, drugs or whatever that, that my life was centered upon and I talked about it all the time, then it'd come out of my music, you know, just, just like anything in, in your life, just like anything that, that that anchors you to like to you know survival if, if you're an artist whether you're a Christian or not what you know is what's going to come through in your art like a perfect example is um, Henry Rollins from the Rollins band he used to be in Black Flag he has seen like lots of pain in his life and when you listen to his records or you read his books that's what he talks about is like dealing with pain the pain he's gone through and it just permeates his work even when he's not directly speaking about oh I'm in pain or whatever it's just like 
the way he deals with problems that you can tell it's someone who's dealt with an immense amount of pain. Well, if you're a Christian, even if you don't say God or Jesus literally in every song, it's that the Christ in you, which is a big part of your life, which is something that you should know should mean more to you than anything, what the sacrifice Christ made for you, is going to permeate your work as an artist. And that's why, I mean, if we're being true to ourselves as Christians and artists, then the focus has to be on Christ. We really, it's not going to be able to be helped, I think. And if it does get help, then... Uh then this is the last interview that they'll ever have or will ever have, you know, so. Well, I, I, know, I know it's been a good guideline for us to, to make sure we see God first and everything. I mean, it's, a, it's like really easily said because, uh, but, it, but it's actually a lot more involved than that. Seeking God first and everything means, means that you're consciously, you're consciously, striving to like take those steps closer to the Holy of Holies, you know, being in His presence. And, and if that means like through pain or through hardship or being in debt, <laughs> I don't know why we're doing a video, <laughs> um, but, but if it means success, you know, if it means people liking your stuff, if it means uh, going down in flames as a band or, or disbanding or whatever, if that, if that is another step towards, you know, being face to face with God then I think that's seeking God first, you know, and, and he promises that, that he, everything else, whatever, whatever that is, that includes everything, that's like so universal, like everything else that's happening in your life, you know, every little thing that you've given to him, obviously, he's going to give back to you, and all that, all his grace and his, and his love is just going to be added unto you, I mean, you could have success and have given everything to God, and God adds more, because he says, and all these things, you know, and everything else will be added unto you. And you're going to have, it's like, you're just going to live life just that much more abundantly. And that, with a robust affirmation of life. Yes. Well, well said. Well, that's what moral is about, so. If there's any more, then come and talk to us somehow. Hi, I'm Frankie. And I'm Davey Allen from Under Midnight. And you're watching Heaven's Metal Video Magazine. What is Under Midnight? Well, what Under Midnight is not is an industrial band, a metal band, a thrash band, or even a rock band in any sort of traditional sense of four guys in a garage rocking out together. And I guess what we are is, is we're a big show. We want to make you think, uh, and not only think about things in the media and things that other artists talk about, uh, things in the world that we maybe can't change because of uh, sin nature, things that are never going to change, some things we're we're never going to be able to affect, but there are a lot of things that we, we can affect. And we hope that our music, uh, because it's a bit grand and a bit grandiose, and hopefully breathtaking in, in its delivery, and harsh sometimes, it's, it's going to make you think about things in a new way, think about things uh, like virtual reality, or uh, even your own sin nature, or whatever, things in ways that you've never thought about them before. So hopefully under midnight, it's just a big push, a big kick in the pants. Why are you involved with and concerned about virtual reality? The reason we uh, are talking about virtual reality on our records, uh, the idea of going into a computer and simulating reality, uh, is because the technology is here, it's interesting, <laughs> it's in place. And uh, the problem that we're seeing is most of the application of virtual reality has been um, ranging from negative to even anti-Christian, and we'd like to see how, how we can help change that. We hate to see the uh, Christian community as a whole, and especially Christian artists and musicians, uh, not get involved with virtual reality or any new technology until it's uh, at a point where it's almost too late to make any kind of dent into uh, how it's going to be used or the way it's going to look or feel or taste. Um, Christians, I think, in all forms of media and entertainment, uh, if they're involved in an earlier stage, can have more of a say on how things are going to work. And I think that uh, virtual reality has great implications and potential for uh, great things and for reaching a lot of people in a very creative way. And so the reason we sang about it and put it in our record was to, to raise awareness in uh, people and make them think about it and hopefully seek out, try to understand what virtual reality is about and maybe get involved in this exciting technology before it's uh, too late. It's more like a bang in the head. How was it working with believers Kurt Bachman? 
Well, Kurt Brockman, a believer, is uh, definitely a great guitar player and a good friend of ours, and it was, it was just a great thing to have him involved with this. I'd known Kurt for a while and uh, had asked him if he'd like to be involved with this, and we knew that his, uh, his playing and his speed and the style that he had would be a good fit for the Under Midnight Project, or at least we had hoped that at the beginning. And uh, we had the material written and most of it on tape, and Kurt flew in uh, to Chicago here at the uh, Sonic Temple, and uh, he just really cranked it out, and it really added a whole new dimension to the record for us. And sure hope we can work with Kurt again uh, in future projects and even on the road. So, uh, hope that works out. A lot of people have been asking us lately if we're going to stick to the same storyline concept approach as on our first record, and um, I think we probably will, but it, it won't be in such an obvious way. I think the lines will be a little more blurry as to what is real and what is not real on the new record, which is, is uh, tentatively titled Welcome to Dystopia. Musically, the record is uh, a lot faster than the last one, and uh, we've tried to grow and take to the, the next step musically what we think uh, we need to do. Um, there's a lot more hybridization. In a lot of ways, we've tried to make the record more pop and also more harsh at the same time. Uh, like I said before, some of the songs are a lot faster, and uh, I think it's a darker record lyrically, not necessarily bummed out, but it is, it is fairly dark, and uh, it will definitely make you think about some new areas look at things from a little different angle again, but new topics this time. Well, making the Cyber Vision video was uh, one of the hardest things we've ever done physically, I think. It was, it was a ton of fun, though, and it was, it was a great deal of fun, and I think everybody there had a good time. Um, it was absolutely the hottest day on the planet, and uh, we probably lost 20 pounds doing it. Um, it took all day and part of the night, and uh, it was, like I said, it was a lot of work. We tried to make the video look uh, like we think the music sounds, and we tried to even put the video together in the same fashion where we use snippets and pieces of different film footage and quick takes of us and, and, and many different images, and uh, hopefully uh, we pulled it off, hopefully you enjoy it, and it uh, kind of gets the uh, vibe across to go with the music. Hi, I'm Frankie. I'm D.B. Allen from Under Midnight. This is Cyber Vision.
です。Nigel Tufnell on bass. Michael Blakey actually on bass. This is uh, Paul Rohrbach on drums. On lead drums. Lead drums. <laughs> lead drums. Lead drums. And uh, Les Carlson. Well, this is our last performance. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think we really are breaking up, but this is our last performance. You can't break up with guys that you love as much as I love them. This is really, this is really a band here.
why the band, why we're putting the brakes on it. We're not breaking up because we're mad at each other, we have musical differences, and I mean, Les has moved to Los Angeles, but that would not stop us from writing and doing a record, you know, no, it didn't stop us from doing this gig, and you know, we know each other well enough, so there's no weirdness as far as that goes, but it just, uh, you know, so we're just, you know, uh, you know, who knows, maybe we'll come back and do an album next year or something like that, but right now I just really feel that, that we have completed the race that got us set before us, and we're going to be doing new things as individuals, and probably together as well. Well, I've only been in the band for a year and a half, but um, I've got some mixed feelings. I um, I feel like I probably am, am closer to a fan's perspective than anybody since, you know, I've been to a lot of Blood Good shows, and when I hear the, the fans saying they're really sad that the band's breaking up, I feel like I can really relate to them, and I've always had respect for the ministry that, that these guys do. We played great the other night. It felt so good. <laughs> Yeah, it was that th these shows and even soundcheck, you know, it tries to make you have second thoughts about what we're doing because it sounds great. I mean, we're, we're I love the lineup right now, you know, it, but it's just, it's just more than that, yeah. more than being a good band. Uh, the band has sounded great and we're having a lot of fun and of course we're getting nostalgic as we realize that we are drawing this thing to a close and... Really? And uh, it's it's weird. It's it's really kind of strange to say the least. Obviously, we've never been in this place before, and and uh, uh, it is hard as because we all are friends and we do love hanging together. And you know, uh, we've seen a lot of stuff together. We've been through heaven and hell together, and you know, that's the kind of stuff that never changes. There's just a bond there. It's just like when I see Dave Zafiro. Dave and I have been through a lot of stuff together. Mark Welling, that could, nothing can erase that. And there's a bond there that we're always going to have as players and as brothers in Christ that will never be replaced by anybody else or superseded. So, you know, um, so that part is, it's, it's really, that part's a bummer, you know. But uh, you have to do what you feel the Lord's telling you to do. And the Lord's just going to bless us in, in ways that we can't even comprehend now. So I'm kind of anxious to see what happens.
we got a Bible here, I'd like to um, share one of the verses that I write on a lot of uh, 8x10s. And it would be Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which would absolutely be probably my favorite couple verses in the Bible. 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, I think one of the keys to it is lean not on your own understanding. There's so many times in the Christian walk we want to uh, take things into our own hands, and uh, we've all done that at times, and I think uh, anyone that's done that knows that eventually things, uh, things go wrong, and uh, living a self-centered and selfish life um, is really not a lot of fun, to be honest with you. And uh, it says also, verse 6, in all your ways acknowledge him. Not in some of your ways, in all your ways, and that, of course, is the key to that. Um, as Christians, it's, it's easy to give God certain parts of our life and want to hold on to other parts, but uh, he needs to be total Lord of our lives. We need to give him 100%, and uh, if there's an area we're struggling with, as we all have areas we struggle with, we need to turn that over to the Lord. And the final uh, part of verse 6, and he will make your path straight, and that is a promise from the Word of God. He will make your path straight, and um, I think that's, uh, that's the fantastic hope of being, being a Christian and of trusting in the Lord, is that he promises to direct us and guide our lives. Thank you. God, the IRS, fast car, television, guilt, Super Nintendo, love, fear, loud noises, virtual reality, Mexican food, faith, anger, girls, Simpty Lock, cyberspace, analog, technology, pain, super Jupiters, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm Doug Van Pelt with Heaven's Metal Magazine. I'm here tonight with the prayer chain. Why don't you guys tell me who you are? Tim Tabor, lead vocals. Eric Camposano, bass. Wayne Everett, drums. And Andy, guitar. Well, we started in Southern California about two and a half years ago. Eric approached me and Andy to start a band, and a few months later we got Wayne in the band as the drummer, and it just kind of came together, you know? We started writing songs, and not too much of a big thing. It just kind of came together. 